Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This season we're going to start with something a little bit different. We have collaborated with a company called Explorico. Explorico is responsible for hosting one of the largest AI conferences which we have in Northern Europe. And during the last conference, we interviewed some of the best guest speakers on AI. So during the next two months, we're going to launch those episodes in this small 15-20 minutes format. So if you enjoy those episodes, please do tell us and like the episode and share with someone else who would benefit from it. In this first podcast of this series, I have a really interesting guest with me, Tonya Heston Shea. Tonya is a well-renowned producer and director of documentaries from Norway. And most of the documentaries have a technological inspiration. She was awarded the Amanda Award for Lost Creation Drone. And in this episode, we talk about her newest one, I Human, which is a documentary about AI and its effect on society. It was a really interesting episode. And I was also allowed to show a small teaser of the documentary at the end of this podcast. Hi, Tonya. Thanks for uh, having the time to come over here. No, thanks for having me. I understand that uh, you have created a short film about AI. Or maybe it's not that short. It's absolutely not that short. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a feature uh, documentary, or I would say political thriller, okay. about how uh, artificial intel- intelligence is uh, changing our lives and our world, and not to mention our future. Okay, that's a lot of topics to cover. <laughs> yes. <laughs> how yes, did it. you go forward with that? Or let's, before we go into that, start with what motivated you to create such a feature? Well, I decided to uh, make a human while I was working on Drone, mm. my last film, uh, which is a film about the secret CIA drone war. And while I was working on Drone, I got very concerned about how our weapons today are becoming more and more autonomous. Mm. And I started doing research on how AI not just is changing modern warfare, but also pretty much everything around us. And to me, I think it is crucial that we stop today and ask the right questions uh, to make sure we go in the right way. So that's how uh, I decided to, to make a human. Wow, but why AI? Because there's so much different technology which is evolving. Why did you focus on that point? Well, you know, we are basically facing uh, what you know many people call the new Big Bang. Uh, and AI is definitely the most powerful and mm. far-reaching technology uh, of our times. And it is developing incredibly, exponentially fast. Uh, and when a technology comes around that changes who we are, our lives, how our societies uh, get structured, um, and also very much so... Um, change you know what our future will look like Mm. i think it is really really important to get the people informed about what's going on and to make sure that we also take control over this technology so that we don't end up with the technology controlling us yeah absolutely so we align with how we want to foresee the future and actually build it the correct way not just let ai loose Absolutely, and I think with the, with AI, this is uh, even more so important than other technologies that mm. I'm also very fascinated by, because since AI is developing so incredibly fast, mm. and we are actually also developing a technology that can become smarter than us, mm. <laughs> it is incredibly important to make sure that we're doing this in the right way, where the, the greater good of humanity is the main priority, where we take the ethical challenges is very, very seriously. And one thing that I've become very concerned about in making this film is to see the incredible power of the big tech companies uh, today. Today, uh, you know, the tech giants spend more money on AI development than entire nations, mm. and they have an incredible amount of power. And they are also run by a very, very few white, young, extremely rich men whose decision, uh, decisions actually you know, affect most of humanity. Yeah, they basically dictate our future. Yeah. And this comes kind of, <laughs> you know, their power then goes into this big AI race that we're facing between the tech giants and nations like US and China. Mm. Um, and... Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's been an amazing uh, 
exciting and terrifying film to uh, to work on, um, and and I'm very very concerned of how you know politicians that are supposed to be responsible for setting up the international framework for artificial intelligence already are falling so far behind the technolo technological advancements. Mm. So um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because you mentioned that AI poses some ethical challenges for us. Yes. Which type of challenges? You know, in a human, we, we cover a huge range of the ethical challenges mm. from how AI is used in our everyday lives, how we are addicted to intelligent machines that sees everything we do and hears everything we say, uh, where tech giants control most of our information, mm. Uh, and what we know about the world and increasingly manipulate how we think and feel. Like, for example, what's shown in your feed or when you Google search. How we are kept in our echo chambers, mm. how is increasing polarization, not to mention fake news, mm. or how AI is used to manipulate elections and uh, in that way it can be a very threat to our democracy. So, I mean, the ranges are huge. Then we also look at bias and how we haven't solved the issue of the black box. And and I just have to say, in, in a human, I follow some of the leading computer scientists and pioneers that are on the front line of the AI development in leading labs in, in uh, the States and in China and in Europe. And one thing that I've uh, taken away from this is that they are also afraid <laughs> they are <laughs> well you know it's like it's it's pretty powerful when you sit with some of the the smartest people in the world in the ai field mm. and you can kind of see the fear in their eyes because things are developing so fast and and also you know how can we control what is going on in all these little labs or big labs in for example china mm. um and, and just having spent quite a bit of time in China during this production, um, you know, just to see how fast China is coming and, and how very, very different ethical considerations they're taking in the AI development um, is definitely something to be concerned about. Because they're moving too fast to control it? or Well, AI is also incredibly efficient when it comes to how it's used for social control. For mm. example, with the, the credit score in China, where everything, I mean, your, your basic personality, everything you do, your friends, how you behave out on the street, if you, you walk on the red light, I mean, where you shop, mm. <laughs> you know, what your habits are. I mean, your whole life is basically... Um, categorized and scored and and your final score then basically determines what good of a citizen you are <laughs> what fast internet you get where you get to travel what your score will be on dating sites what kind of jobs you get wow. i mean it so is so we have a segregation based on how you act in the society absolutely and and one thing that i'm you know, was was also kind of surprised of us just to see what kind of systems are already in, pla in place in the Western world mm -hmm. that is sort of darker but leading us in the same same direction okay. because we are so unaware of how AI is used uh, and how it actually is implemented in our lives. So I feel like I've been sort of taking a journey out of sci-fi and into the real stories, you know, behind. Mm -hmm. Black Mirror and Westworld and <laughs> all the amazing sci-fi, uh, you yeah, know. But it's amazing that, um, when it's on screen, but when it's actually in your life, that's a bit more scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Black Mirror for me is very close to home. Mm. <laughs> so absolutely, that's one of the things which I find also quite interesting about the series is they take a concept which is quite near reality and just spin a bit off center. Yeah. But having talked with all of these scientists. Did any one of them also have a positive view of how we could move out of this negative trends or dark trends? Well, to be honest with you, uh, I've done uh, close to 80 interviews uh, in this film. And all um, of them said we're doomed. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and I just have to say, is I'm that absolutely... That's why we're building rockets for Mars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what the whole Mars thing is all about. How do we get out of here? Um, no, I, I mean, and I just have to say, I'm... I'm 
Absolutely. I mean, it sounds like I'm, you know, a, a Luddite and against AI. I'm mm -hmm. incredibly fascinated by AI, and I, I am also incredibly um, op, uh, optimistic that we will see some of the promises come through. But until we deal with the, the forces that are behind this technology and, and where the power is with no international governance, uh, I am just really worried that we are going on the wrong track. Mm. Um, and, you know, most of the people that I met basically, you know, agree that AI is not good or evil. Mm. I mean, it is the people behind the technology that is the most important. And it can be used for all type of purposes. But what we're afraid of is that if we create a general intelligence that we can't control it and just takes us on a darker path, is that it? Or also the way up to them? Like we will recreate what we see now in China. Well, I think it's, uh, you know, how, how we already see that AI is used and controlled by the big tech companies. But is it already used the same way in Europe? Absolutely. I mean, uh, these are global companies. Mm. Uh, and even though Europe is, is leading uh, the way when it comes to, you know, privacy uh, regulations and stuff, we, we are still part of a, the, the global <laughs> family that we, you know, we have created. So, and that comes with, uh, with challenges that we have to take seriously. I mean, how much power do we want these big tech companies to have? Mm. Why shouldn't we demand transparency and responsibility? And why, why isn't it possible to get some international regulations in place? And, uh, and with the film, we have a massive impact campaign. Uh, we have already had uh, big panels in, uh, at the film festival in Cannes and in Berlin, uh, where we've had the vice president of Microsoft and the people in charge of regulations at UN and EU uh, present. And uh, we also just got selected to screen the film at the, the Business and Human Rights uh, mm. event uh, at the UN right after our world premiere. That's really good to hear that the film is actually making real impact. Very exciting. Mm. How do you see the future for this film? This we haven't even started yet. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. No, I think that uh, the timeliness of this film uh, couldn't be any better. Mm. Uh, and we are extremely excited to contribute to the ethical debate around AI uh, right now, both on the, the national level uh, and uh, the international level. And uh, we're also uh, hoping to build more uh, partnerships with responsible and courageous uh, tech companies mm. because really we're at this, this point in history where it's time to stand up and be counted. Uh, and, uh, and we are seeing that there is a big hunger also in the tech industry and in the AI industry for this film to come out. Mm. And to have some sort of ethical regulation or do they foresee that that will be more of a barrier for progress? How do the tech companies react to this? Well, I think that, you know, on the inside of the tech companies, uh, they have already started this discussion, but mm. they are terrified of regulations. And regulations are, you know, very complex. This technology is hard to just put under one set of rules. Mm. Uh, but, you know... Um, the importance of, of fine-tuning these regulations just to make sure that we don't end up uh, on the wrong path, uh, I think, you know, is something that we have to strive for. Absolutely. And do you believe that this is something which should be done on a national level, European level, or can normal individuals also affect this? Well, I think that, you know, it's, it's important to, to also realize that as uh, normal people, we have a lot of power. Um, and uh, and I, uh, I love what um, some people are saying now is that, you know, the best way to control your future is to create it. Mm. Uh, and I totally believe in that. And we have become so used to privacy uh, being gone. Uh, and we're already way too comfortable in, in sort of what is called the post-privacy age. Uh, and I think it's, it's important to take a step back and, and look at how the big tech companies look at, a, at us as users. Mm but also then to be like, okay, so how are we being used? We should demand to have some control of our own data. We should demand to know how our data is being used and misused. Uh, and I think that is, there's a lot of power in that. And it's also, you know, to, to talk to our governments and to demand that our governments, both locally and internationally, 
take some some action when it comes to moving forward on this because you know I've, I've been working uh, with the issue around technology and humans now for over a decade and it is astounding to see how little information or how little knowledge we have within the politicians that are to set the the roadmap for the way ahead uh, and that is something that I find extremely terrifying. Mm. I don't believe that the technology companies are also find this quite terrifying that these people will put regulations for example for ethics that are more restrictive than a positive. So one of the trends which the technology has is that move fast and break things which goes <laughs> across of how ethics and uh, I do that quite be. a bit myself <laughs> <laughs> right but it's not always positive as you just mentioned especially with AR we have to tread carefully but how can we ensure that the politicians that are putting out these regulations and rules actually are well enough informed to be able to do so well that is that is uh, you know one of the big questions that we're facing today mm. uh, and I think that you know um, the, what I'm doing towards this is making a film about it that I'm screening in the UN and the EU and I mm. think that we have to put people and politicians today through a, a training to make them understand what kind of challenges it is that we are facing mm. because it is so complex and we do need governance on this that is well informed about all the different levels and dimensions that this technology brings. I completely agree. Thanks a lot for taking time for this podcast. Thank you. Humankind as a whole is not the crown of creation. We are setting the stage for something that transcends us. A new form of life is emerging. Artificial intelligence is rapidly reshaping the world. It's going to be everywhere all the time. It's going to hear everything. It's going to be connected to every single camera on the planet. AI will ultimately be the best thing ever to happen to humanity or the worst thing ever. That's why this is the most important conversation of our time. If we look at what AI is mostly being developed for, it's killing, spying, and brainwashing. Computer algorithms can reveal our political views or sexual orientation. Privacy is gone. We as humanity are about to go into a very dark time. Cyber attacks, fake news, totally automated AI weapons. AI is going to be the most important technology in the history of the planet. Will humans actually benefit? Think carefully about this. We're basically building a god. What we're seeing now is like a train hurtling down a dark tunnel, and it looks like we're sleeping at the wheel. 